called Michael. Today we are here in uh, Brussels at uh, Investing uh, Europe offices. Uh, and can you please tell us uh, what are the major differences between the European venture capitalist and the US venture capitalist in the investment approach, in the degree of freedom, and other differences? Yeah, I think the, the first thing I'd say is, is actually that there are quite a lot of similarities between European VC and, and, and US VC. Mm -hmm. um, both sets of investors, wherever they're located, um, are looking to find great companies that they can make even better. So the, the basic philosophy is the same, whether you're located in Europe or, or located in the US. But probably the single biggest difference between European VC and US VC is the size of the, of the funds. US VC funds are much bigger than those in, in, in Europe. There's much more venture capital financing available in the, in the US. Uh, it's around about 25 billion uh, funds raised every year by US VCs, but only about 5 billion raised by, by European venture capitalists. So what that means is there's more capital available in the US, they can finance more companies and they can finance them for longer. Uh, but the underlying philosophy of what they're trying to do and how they're trying to grow and improve the companies is, is exactly the same. Uh, US VCs are known to attract many European companies to USA uh, who come and uh, stay there and uh, develop their businesses in USA. Not much information is available uh, about the reverse process. Uh, what are the major incentives uh, for a startup to come to Europe and uh, look for European VC capitalists? Yeah, I think our first, our first challenge is to ensure that, that we're keeping good European companies here in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're right to point out that there are too many examples of, of good European startups, entrepreneurs with great ideas who are choosing to go to the US to get, to get finance. So while we might have a, a long-term goal of trying to get global uh, entrepreneurs coming to Europe, I think right now our, our, our objective is to keep hold of, of, of the entrepreneurs that we've got. And we do have good entrepreneurs yes. in, in Europe. We've got great businesses. Um, we've got a very well-educated uh, workforce. We've got very, very good universities that are uh, delivering people with, with good ideas and with, with new technologies and new um, innovative ways of, of working. Um, uh, and we've got uh, a very mature set of markets into which they can sell those products. So there are loads of good reasons for, for entrepreneurs to stay in Europe, to, to build their businesses in Europe. Uh, but what they don't always have, and this is one of the great attractions of the US, uh, is access to the capital. They don't have access to capital in the early days of the, of the company's life, and even more importantly, it's when the company's really starting to grow and starting to take off. And so if we can get that right, if we can get the financing and the uh, availability of capital sorted out here in Europe, there are very, very good reasons why not only European entrepreneurs will want to stay here, but maybe in the longer term, we will be able to compete yes. with Silicon Valley for that global talent. Uh, when a business approaches VC, uh, the first question uh, they ask, uh, how fast can you deliver returns uh, and what needs to be done? So, how fast a European VC market can achieve the level of attractiveness of US market? I, mean, I think the, the, the first thing I'd say probably is to slightly uh, uh, challenge the premise of your question. That I think the first question that a, that a VC asks, wherever they're located, whether it be in Europe or, or in the US, is how can I take this great company and make it even better? What's the vision that the entrepreneur has got for their product or their service and how can I work with them? Okay, second question. Version. So no, the second question fast. then is, how, is, fast can I have my money is how can I deliver returns? Because ultimately this is a, um, a financial investment that's, mm -hmm. being, that's being made and the venture capitalist on behalf of his or her investors needs to, to achieve, uh, achieve returns. I mean, you're, you're right to note that the, that the US market is, is bigger and more attractive yes. at, the, at the moment. Uh, one of the things we have to remember is that the US has been doing this longer than we have in, in Europe. So um, US VC can... Um, go back 30 or 40 years, we're really only in the 15 or 20 year um, period in, so in, in Europe. Market. So you're a younger market. So we're younger, a younger market and, and, and I think the, the amount of capital available reflects that to some extent. But there are things that can be, be done. The first thing I would say is that um, those VCs that are already operating in Europe need to continue to deliver good returns. If the returns performance is there, we will start to 
attract more institutional investment into the, into the sector. So um, before we ask anybody else to help the sector, we need to do our job um, ourselves. The second thing we need to do is get the policy framework right, uh, particularly at the European Union level. So things like the revision to the European Venture Capital Regulation, um, things like the Fund of Funds initiative that the European Commission is, is working on, these will all help to deliver more capital for the European VC sector. And thirdly, I think, as Invest Europe, as an association, what we need to do is to continue to explain to people just what it is that venture capital can deliver and, and help to sell and market the, uh, the venture capital industry to investors but also to companies so that both sides, both the investors and the entrepreneurs understand the value that, that venture capital can bring. And if we get those three things right, I think we'll look back over the course of the next few years and see that the, the VC in Europe has become uh, much more attractive than it is, is currently. We've still got some way to go to, to be able to say that we can um, really compete with the, with the US, but I think the signs are there that we can, uh, we can make some really positive progress. So you think a year, five years, two years uh, before we uh, see any results? I mean, it, it's hard to put a, to put a timetable on it. I think the, the policy framework changes uh, can be delivered fairly quickly, and, and the European Commission has some, some big plans as part of their Capital Markets Union agenda uh, to make some changes next year in, in, in 2016. Uh, but attracting significantly more capital into the into European venture is not going to happen overnight. It's not a one year, it's not even a two year project. I think we have to have a five or ten year kind of horizon. Um, uh, but if we can get the, the, the steps taken that I've already outlined, I think uh, if we speak again in five years time, I think we'll see a European VC that's much bigger than it is uh, at the moment. Europe is moving towards um, you know, capital markets union. Yeah. Uh, what are the current steps uh, in the policy uh, that have already eased VC life yeah. in Europe yeah. and what policies are about to come in 2016? Yeah. Well, Capital Markets Union is a, is a great initiative for, for the venture capital industry because it's all about promoting the flow of capital across borders and it's about finding alternative ways to fund small businesses and in particular to fund innovative businesses. So the European Commission's philosophy for Capital Markets Union fits very, very well with what European Venture Capital does. Um, I think what the Commission have recognised is that the, the key challenge for European VC is to get bigger. We need more scale. So at the moment, the average European Venture Capital Fund is around about 60 or 70 million euros. Uh, a typical US fund would be almost double that, that size. So one of the things the Commission wants to do is to make it easier for European venture capitalists to find investors from across Europe. So they're going to revise the European venture capital regulation to, to facilitate that. And they've also made a commitment uh, to develop something called a fund of funds, which will be a new investment vehicle uh, that hopefully will be managed by a private sector fund of funds manager who will be able to take some money from the EU budget and match that with capital that they've raised from global investors. And then what we'll have is an investment vehicle in Europe that is much bigger and becomes much more attractive to these global institutional investors than some of the smaller VC funds are themselves. Uh, and both of those initiatives, both the revision of the EU venture capital regulation and this fund of funds, are things that the Commission want to, to launch in 2016. So this is quite an exciting time in terms of the, the public policy developments for, for VC. And we've got a European Commission that's very, very keen to, to, to back venture capital and to do what it can to, to promote the sector and help it to grow. So that, in turn, European venture capitalists can play their part in delivering jobs and growth in, in Europe.